In this episode of Gear Garage, I want to start a new series that answers the two questions. How do I be safer on the river? And what do I do if something goes wrong? And those are tough questions to answer. Historically, people say just take a swift water rescue class. And I'm starting to disagree with that answer. So I'm trying to come up with other solutions for how people can be safer and do something if things go wrong. Now, I'm gonna share a lot of opinions here based on my experience. I am wrong all the time. I am not telling you this is the answer. I'm telling you I've been thinking about this a lot and I have some strong opinions on how we can train and be better and safer, more responsible on the river and also handle emergencies. And by just taking a swift water rescue class, that might not be the right answer. It, it definitely depends on who teaches the class, who else is in the class, sort of the background of everybody. But one of the things about traditional swift water rescue is it's for designed a lot of times for firefighters or first responders who are paid professionals that show up on a scene and do some sort of rescue. A lot of times it's in a, a flood situation or it's a family took a no PFDs, took a raft down and got stuck on a rock and people are missing. You know, that's a different thing than you're boating with your friends. Your friends are all dressed correctly. Uh, your friends are trained potentially and you're floating down the river and there's a problem and you have to solve it. And you have different tools because you have boats. The firefighters generally show up a little bit late with ropes. And so their techniques aren't always great. And this stems somewhat from the thing I hear a lot is swimmer rope. Like as soon as there's a swimmer, people throw a rope. And ropes are really dangerous. I don't want people throwing a rope every time they see a swimmer. Seeing a swimmer should mean go get them. You have boats and you should have tight boat spacing so that you can manage swimmers without ropes. And so I don't like the idea swimmer equals rope. The other thing I hear a lot is wrap equals three to one, right? As soon as the boat is wrapped or stuck, oh, let's get a rope on it and do a three to one. I think that works for people, again, showing up to the shore bank with a bunch of people and tons of a gear, sure that works. But doing a three to one should not be our first thing. So two particular things I'm trying to not have happen anymore are swimmer equals rope and wrap equals three to one. And so I think for swift water rescue, there's a lot of things we could change. And I'm gonna to try to call it whitewater rescue or river rescue. I think Sierra Rescue calls it river rescue, which is great. Uh, maybe I'll call it that. But I think swift water rescue in my mind now denotes first responders showing up to shore with shore-based techniques. I think that whitewater rescue or river rescue are people who are experienced boaters having a problem on the river and performing some sort of rescue. And I think by far, these rescues are getting swimmers out of the water. That's a, that's a rescue, that's a real rescue. Somebody falls out getting it back in. And I think more focus needs to be, be placed on how to maintain tight boat spacing and have you know people be able to rescue each other quickly on the go. So those are some thoughts I have. Again, I want your opinions. This is just my thought based on my experience, uh, discussions I've had. And I want to share a slide with you. And I understand that this slide is way too much information on it. And if this is a PowerPoint presentation, you should be super upset. But hopefully you can look at this. And I want to quickly go through how these, why these things are different. And I think it's, it's making the point that rafters have different needs than kayakers who have different needs for professional rescuers. And so just I'm going to go by this line by line. Rafters and kayakers are river-based. Right, we, we are boaters and we're on the river. Professional rescuers, like I said earlier, are coming from somewhere and they're land-based. Either they're setting up safety ahead of time for some event, so they're all ready to go, or they're being called in to do something. Rafters, we have rafts. Kayakers, we have kayaks. Professional rescuers sometimes have rafts, but they have to you know, launch those rafts. It's a whole process to get them in, so they're not ready to go usually. Uh, as rafters, we carry pretty minimal safety gear. We call our safety gear our raft kit. Because uh, it has like pulleys and prosthetics. It should have more than that, but what we have is pretty minimal. Kayakers are the same, probably less. And professional rescuers have all kinds of safety gear. They have guns to shoot ropes. They have trucks they can tie onto, probably winches. They have they have full kits with all kinds of radios. They are rescue geared out, which is great for what they're doing. But we're not able to carry all that gear or we're just not going to. Um, rafters, with the victim, they're usually dressed and capable. You know, sometimes they're, you know, they could be somebody who's never been rafting, but at least you've already put them in a PFD and hopefully a wetsuit if the water's cold. Uh, and if they're another boater, they can actually throw a rope, they can catch a rope, they can tie knots. 
if they're just you know passenger again they may not be that capable but victims are definitely somewhat capable same thing with kayakers kayakers are more capable because everybody's a participant everybody hopefully has some ability to swim and throw ropes and do some sort of things and again the kayakers are typically dressed professional rescuers are rescuing people who are not dressed they just accidentally ended up on this rock or their car got stuck above a dam they're not useful right they don't know what they're doing and they're not dressed correctly so getting them out of the water quickly is probably more important because they're not ready for the cold water uh, for rafters everybody is generally a part of the trip uh, in kayakers everybody is a participant and for professional rescuers there are trained rescuers and there are victims there's two separate classes of people and with rafting and kayaking some people could who are victims could also be very effective in their own self-rescue and like a lot of the times we'll say the best rescue is self-rescue and so the participants uh, for rafting and kayaking can self-rescue they can help where professional rescuers they're just sitting there and they're being rescued they're typically not asked to swim or do anything next step is just training uh, rafters get a very minimal amount of training like we might take a class but a class i would call education learning things training is doing it go flipping a boat on your day off throwing a throw bag setting up some sort of rope system doing something we do very minimal training as rafters uh, kayakers though get a lot of practice like even though they're not training that much things go wrong kayaking all the time there's swimmers and all kinds of things so kayakers actually do this stuff a lot because in kayaking you tend to do more difficult things and you when you're learning you learn how to deal with swimmers and kayaks more than typical rafters do professional ref rescuers get extensive training they take classes but they're on their days off or part of their their search and rescue or the firefighting team they're doing training so they're very well trained they're highly trained um, they may not know much about the river environment as we do but their training is high level so and we have to remember that we're not better than them in any way we know the river better and when they show up we should respect the amount of training they've done because they have done a lot of it uh, as raptors we carry minimal gear in terms of safety gear we carry a few things everybody you know we generally carry pulleys and prussics uh throw bags but pretty minimal uh, same thing with kayakers they probably probably have less stuff where professional rescuers have all kinds of things i mean they have the they have like, like the coolest tools ever you know they spend a lot of money on this stuff so they're they're ready to go with things we didn't even know existed uh, for a rafter our best rescue tool is our raft you know we can go take our raft somewhere and get somebody off on a rock if a boat is pinned we might build a raft to it and get somebody out on it they can catch a rope so our best tool is our raft for kayakers the best tool is a kayak you have your kayak you can go get a person with a kayak you know sometimes i'll see kayaks pull over and pull a throw bag out i'm not sure why they do that i mean I can, in some instances i see it for sure but like your kayak is your best tool you can go get somebody and give them assistance so that's your best tool where professional rescuers the best tool is a rope they're on shore they have ropes and they're very well trained with ropes and i think this is why sometimes so many of our answers to problems like swimmers and rafts are ropes because there's this this part of swift water rescue that swift water rescue started with firefighters and first responders right and we are applying those things to the river and so we think of swift water rescue as very rope based and again if you're on coming on the shore that's all you have is ropes and so your best tool is the rope i think we're forgetting in a lot of our rescue courses that we're taking and teaching is that our best tool are our boats so we can actually go out to places and affect rescues we don't have to use ropes as much next is i think i call this the look and so i i think as rafters we should be sleek we shouldn't have tools hanging off of our pfds and so i call it the catwoman look we don't need I don't like external knives. I'm not saying you can't wear one, but I'm just saying an external knife can get caught up on things. You want to be sleek so you have less drag when you're swimming and there's less things for you to get caught in as you're pulling yourself back in the boat or being pulled back in the boat. So I'm going to say you're, you want to have this like cat woman look. Same thing with kayakers, you know, kay same exact thing. You know, you don't see the best, if you look at the best kayakers in the world, the class five plus men and women who kayak, they are not, they don't have rescue harnesses and big loops everywhere and and big knives on that outside their pfd they're slim because they know when they swim they want minimal drag and they can put all that stuff in their pocket and have access to it whereas professional rescuers they should look like batman they need radios they need big pfds they need all kinds of carabiners and stuff hanging off of them 
right? That's that's a good thing because they're they're not planning to go in the water. They are on shore. The reason they're dressed and wearing a PFD is in case they go in the water, which is a rarity. Like it's a it's a backup just in case. But they're not intending at all to go in the water, and so they can have all these doodads and things. Now there's rescue swimmers. They're probably not having all the doodads. They're probably just in a basic PFD because they recognize it's easier to swim without all the doodads. And I think what happens with swift water rescue classes is you take a class from somebody who's an instructor and somebody you look up to, and because they have all the doodads, they have all kinds of bad, not badges, but it looks like badges, you know, knives and radios and little tethers that go everywhere. We want to model that behavior. And I think that we should model the behavior. Like look at the class five kayakers doing the hardest stuff in the world. I would model that behavior for rafters and kayakers. So I would say we want to look more like Catwoman. And finally for rafters, the rescues that we would do are generally swimmers, but they're also pinned swimmers, like people stuck um, either on a log or a rock. A raft, raft that's just perched on a rock, whether it's in a good place or a bad place. Uh, raft rafts and flip drafts. These are the things we commonly deal with. These are rescues that we have to deal with. And I feel like we should practice these specific things. For kayakers, it's swimmers, uh, pin swimmer or pin kayak. Those are the things kayakers generally deal with. It's a little bit smaller list. Unless they're providing safety for a rafts, they don't have to worry about the, the wrapped rafts or flipped rafts. And professional rescuers have to deal with a whole huge variety of things, everything else. You know, the car stuck on a tree in a flood, the parents who took their kids on a river in a, in a Kmart raft and they flipped and they're all stranded everywhere. Somebody's on a rock. People pinned on a rock, but they also have to deal with body extractions. If somebody died, they're the ones that go deal with that. We don't generally deal with that. So they have a much more broad type of thing they have to learn. And so the point I'm going to make here as I close this episode up is if we want to be safer, we want to ask, ask, ask the question, how am I safer? And answer the question, what do I do if something goes wrong? My opinion is to focus on this. If you're, this is for rafters, this whole video, if I didn't make this clear, I should have made it clear earlier, it's for rafters. It, because this, this channel is mostly for rafters. My, my opinion though is, is focus on this rafter column. Like think about this and let's go for that perspective. And then let's take classes from people who are teaching rafters who have a rafting background, right? If a professional rescuer is teaching fire or teaching a rafter, they're gonna teach them some things, but it might not be totally appropriate. And uh, when, I'm, when I'm teaching a class or I'm taking a class, I want my time in that class to be really effective on what I'm doing. I want to cover exactly what's appropriate to me. So we're gonna again do a few more, quite a few more of these videos about just my opinions like this. About, about safety and rescue. How do I become safer? What do I do if something goes wrong? And what I really wanna do is share my thoughts and opinions. I have tons of them. Uh, and then uh, please give me feedback. And I'm gonna just keep pumping out videos like this uh, on, on topics I think are important that delineate uh, between raptors, kayakers, and professional rescuers, but also answer those two questions I brought up multiple times. So that's it. Please comment, like, subscribe, do all the things, and I'll see you in the next episode. Thanks. Oh, oh, wait, wait, one more thing. If you want to see the next episode, look up here. It's gonna, I'm going to put the next episode here. Now, if this just came out, it won't be there, right? But if this, if this came out, you know, if the next episode came out, I'm going to put the next one here, and we're just going to keep rolling a series of these so you can keep watching all of them with this path I'm going down in terms of safety and rescue. So that's it. Again, see you next time. Thanks.